Hello everybody, a friend of mine asked me how I would simulate dice throws in a flash game and evaluate the dice throws for doubles. And I thought it would be a good programming lesson for all beginners, so we're going to do a video on it right now. And this is the finished product of what you'll be learning to create. Press roll dice on that button and it tells you what you rolled. Your roll will never be more than a 12, and never be less than a 2. And if you happen to roll doubles on the dice, it says doubles, you get a free turn. Or whatever you want to do for the player when doubles occur. If you want to give them some kind of bonus, you want to give them a free turn, and it's all covered in this lesson. Okay, let's rock and roll. You can work with any Flash version that supports working with ActionScript 3.0 and create new ActionScript 3.0 file. The first thing I'm going to do is create a button. I'll grab rectangle primitive and I'll draw it out to make a button. Now I will get some text on that. Okay, so there's the things I want in my button. I'm going to highlight both of those items. Right click, convert to symbol, make sure it's a button symbol and symbol one in the library is a good name okay now with that selected the instance name for that is going to be roll underscore btn roll button now let's create a new layer here and call this as3 short for action script 3 let's go inside and let's type in or actually if you don't know how to get into your actions panel you can highlight that keyframe or that frame press F9 on your keyboard or you can go to window actions and that'll open your actions panel or you can hit the little arrow button over here for actions if you have that available in that panel but basically you just get to your scripting panel and what we'll do is we'll type in role underscore btn dot add event listener and this is mouse event dot click so when the button is clicked, we want to listen for that. And let's make the function that fires off called roll dice. Let's copy that name, roll dice. Go down one line, type in function, paste it in, roll dice. Open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon, void, and then open your curly brace. Go down a couple of lines and close off your curly brace to close the function nest and here inside of the parentheses we're going to type in event colon mouse event so now we're all set up with listener and function for that roll dice button okay now I'm going to make the dice the simulated dice I'm going to grab the text tool and I'm going to type in a zero and let's see it's white so let's make it black so we can see it and we'll make sure this text is dynamic and we'll give it an instance name of die one underscore txt to let us know it's a text field in the code now let's just raise the size of that maybe right about there is good and let's make sure we have it centered in the text field I'm gonna show border around it make it not selectable but show border I'm gonna make mine just a little wider that looks good to me so I'm gonna control C control shift V make a copy of that put it right next to it. I'm going to call this one in the instance name die2. So in the properties panel we're going to name it die2 underscore txt. And you can just go ahead and take the letters out or the, the zero. Now let's create another dynamic text field for the status. I'm going to make the size of this one I don't know maybe 20. Color black that's good. I don't need it to be to have a border around it and I'm just gonna place it right here and I don't want that one to have centered text so I'm gonna make sure it's formatted to the left and I'm gonna put these things over here and then I'm gonna copy this one actually let's give that an instance name first the status underscore txt let's remove the text from it then I'm gonna copy that control C control shift V make another static uh, dynamic text field rather and let's give that one the name of doubles doubles underscore txt and let's make this one green this one is going to be the one that shows the user if they have run doubles and I'll show you how to listen for that or make an evaluation for that to see if they if the user has rolled a double you want to give them a bonus or you want to fire off some function to give them an extra turn or whatever alright you can see I put something on my action script 3 layer which just happens to be all of these things so I'm gonna take those off control X I'm going to put them on my layer 1, control shift V. I'm going to lock my action script 3 layer so I don't accidentally put anything on there again. 
Okay, we have everything on stage that we need for this little simulated dice throwing application. Now we'll go into the Action Script 3 and finish it off. All right, the first thing we're going to do is add two lines here, and these are going to be for calculating what the value should be on die 1 and what the value should be on die 2. So those are two variables we're creating here. Now we get the value of those variables by getting a random number between 1 and 6. And I have a tutorial that I made a long time ago for Flash Action Script 3.0, and it's called Random Number Generator. I showed people how to make a random number between 1 and 10 or 1 and 100, whatever number they wanted to go in between 1 and whatever. So I used that code here and I just applied it to making our dice to make a number, a random number, between 1 and 6 every time. It won't be outside of those bounds. It won't be a 0 and it won't be beyond a 6 ever. So we have those values using math.random times 6. So you calculate that and then you plus 1 to it. You use math.floor on this little calculation right here, and that what that's what'll round your number down. So basically, that's how you get a random number between one and six, packed into a variable called die one and die two. Now let's put the dice total into a variable. So let's make a new variable and call it dice total. And this is going to be type uint as well. And this is equal to die one plus die two. That way you can know exactly how many spaces on your flash game board that the user can move. Now the next line down we're going to populate the value of die 1 into our simulated dice text field on stage. So you say die 1 underscore txt is what we named it dot text is equal to the die 1 uint variable dot to string. So we use the dot to string method to make it a string before we place it into the text field here. If, I think if you tried to put this into a text field without claiming to string, like if you just put die one like that, the value, you'll get some flash error when you go to export this. So you just say to string, or you see a lot of people will do something like this. They'll put in an actual string with nothing. You can put in a string, like you would type in some words, but just put nothing in it and then put plus die one and that'll work just the same as die one to string make sense okay good now let's just copy that line next line down we're gonna put die two text is equal to die two dot to string now the next line down we're gonna put status underscore txt target that status text field dot text is equal to the string of you rolled space and then after your double quote you just put in plus the dice total which is this variable right there pop it in place put your semicolon to break that line and now you, the last thing you need is an if else condition statement so you say if open close parentheses open the curly brace go down one line else and there just make sure you nest it just like that you open your curly brace and you close your curly brace then you put else open curly brace close curly brace and the condition we want to listen for is die one is equal to die two this way you can listen for doubles so if die one is equal to die two then in the doubles text let's say doubles underscore txt dot text is equal to doubles you say real big you you get a free turn else doubles text will be nothing now what you want to do is if they get doubles maybe you want to run a custom function here say give another turn and that's where you can execute that function of give another turn to this player whoever happens to roll the doubles okay I'll just comment that out right there function for doubles bonus okay let's take a look at this here everything looks good I spelled the word doubles wrong that would have been an error and I think I have everything else spelled right for these text fields on stage so let's test it out control enter and this says the font should be embedded just because I'm in CS5 and I can embed those fonts or whatever I gotta embed the stupid fonts alright let me go back here 
what am I using? Verdan? I'm going to embed Verdan. I'm going to do uppercase, lowercase, numerals, punctuation. Okay. Now let's control enter. See? Hey, look at that. First roll, I got doubles. All right, looks like this text field's too big. So let's make this green one the text size maybe around 18. Control enter. Roll dice. You rolled a 9. You rolled 5. You rolled 4. You rolled 9. Let's see if I can get doubles again. And it'll never be more than a 12 and less than 2. Rest assured. There you go, I got doubles. See, you doubles, you get a free turn. So when the doubles occur on the dice, then you know that you can give the person some kind of bonus or whatever, maybe a free turn, whatever you're going to do to them in you, with your game. Okay? But that's pretty much is how it's done, buddy. And there's the little script. And I'll have this script available on the page at developphp.com. If you guys happen to type something in wrong, you know mine is typed right because I just tested it and everything. So if uh, you have any trouble with your script, you can come and get my script from the page where this lesson will be displaying at developphp.com. And I'll also have this little flash file available just for demonstration purposes.